Hello and welcome to this week's lecture on international trade. I'm Mike Wenz and I'll be guiding you through the slides. Recall that trade is based on comparative advantage. From earlier in the course we learned about the sources of comparative advantage and the notion that economies and, and firms and individuals should specialize in producing the things where they have a comparative advantage. In the context of countries in international trade, the countries who can produce a good at the lowest opportunity cost will specialize and export that good. And they'll trade for other goods with countries who have comparative advantage in different goods. So, for example, the United States has a comparative advantage in the manufacture of computer software, while China has a comparative advantage in, in manufactured goods and textiles. Uh, so the U.S. produces computer software and trades with China for manufactured products. This trade is based on comparative advantage. In the basic model, which we'll examine in this chapter here, goods will trade at a world price that reflects the cost of production in the lowest cost country in the world, or lowest cost countries in the world if there are several that are very close. Exports to a particular country in our model are a very small fraction of global production. So uh, relative to the United States, uh, relative to the world consumption of textiles, the United States makes up a, a relatively small fraction of the export market. Um, in this, in this scenario, countries are price takers in global markets. They're not big enough to have much influence on world prices. That uh, There's a going rate that, that goods trade at in the world, and countries, by buying and selling more or less of the good, uh, don't influence the global price very much. Now, if this world price is lower than the domestic price, the domestic country will import the good. That is, uh, if, if you can get it cheaper from somewhere else, the country will import it. If the world price is higher than the domestic price, then the country will export the good. So if the, uh, if the country can sell its products on the world market at a higher price than they can sell it in their home country, then they will export at least some of their production of the goods. So the world price uh, will determine and, and make apparent to countries which goods they have a comparative advantage in and which goods they do not. An import is a good that's produced abroad and purchased domestically. And we noted in the previous slide, if the world price is lower than the domestic price, the domestic country will import the good. Exports, of course, are goods that are produced domestically and sold abroad. In this case, if the world price is higher than the domestic price, the country will export the good. Let's take a look at a graphic example. Consider a country that exports corn, like the United States does. The United States is a net exporter of corn. The world price, say, is $6 a bushel, where the domestic price, if there were no international trade, might be just $4 a bushel. That is, countries around the world can, uh, could obtain corn at a price of $6 uh, without any exports from the U.S., but if, if the U.S. produced its own corn and sold only to its domestic market, the market clearing price would be $4. In this case, without trade, domestic production would be 500 bushels, and domestic consumers would pay $4 each. But consider what happens when we allow domestic producers to sell, their, sell some of their output on the world market and in a world that's, that is willing to pay $6 a bushel. When we add in trade, what we wind up with is domestic production of 750 bushels. We start to produce more. And we export more. We export uh, 400, uh, 450 bushels. We consume 300 bushels at home at a price of $6. We export 450 bushels to the rest of the world and uh, increase the output of production of this good corn, which we have a comparative advantage in. Now, note that the price to domestic consumers rises from $4 to $6. Domestic producers, given a choice between selling to uh, consumers at home or selling to consumers abroad, are, of course, going to seek the higher price, and so that they will, uh, they will sell abroad until consumers domestically are willing to pay the same $6 that these, uh, that these exporters can obtain on the world market. Okay. Now, let's take a look at what happens to surplus. Consumer surplus without trade is given by triangles A, B, and C. 
Consumers without trade pay a price of $4 and consume 500 bushels. So uh, boxes A, B, and C represent consumer surplus in a world without trade. Producers obtain surplus equal to box D and E. They are able to sell their wares at $4, and uh, the first 500 bushels of corn are produced at, a, at an opportunity cost of less than $4, and so producers gain some surplus by producing those 500 bushels. D and E thus represents producer surplus. But what happens if we allow exports? What we see is that the price rises to $6 for both domestic and uh, global consumers. And so consumer surplus shrinks. B and C go away. Consumers now only consume 300 bushels domestically. So consumer surplus is now uh, triangle A. But note that producer surplus has gone by more than that. The surplus associated with B and C has shifted from consumers to producers, and producers also pick up area F. So the grand total size of the pie, if you want to think of this as national income or GDP or something like that, uh, has risen due to uh, this creation of exports, and the increase in surplus is given by triangle F. So surplus rises with trade. In the export market, we pick up area F in additional producer surplus. Consumers are made slightly worse off in this market. They lose B and C. But producers recapture that. Producers recapture B and C and also capture area F. So the total size of the pie, the total surplus, has grown. Now, note that one of the things that we learned earlier in the course is that uh, with trade, can, uh, economies can move beyond their production possibilities frontier. And this is what's happening when we go to area F. We're moving beyond our production possibilities frontier. In this situation, in an ex with an export market, American consumers pay a little more, but American producers and workers in this industry gain a lot more.